Hello everybody. I said a few weeks ago that I was going to start recording a video series measuring my progress as I go about preparing and then starting to write a novel. Um, a couple of things have happened to distract me since then and it looks like um, the preparation part of that hasn't happened. Not just I haven't recorded the videos but I've not actually done the preparing to write anything. But April is the first month of Camp NaNoWriMo, which is a kind of spin-off of National Novel Writing Month in November. Basically, a whole bunch of people are trying to write a novel in a month. Some people use it for other things. Um, it's basically a motivation thing, so people spur each other on and you get more done and you realise that writing a book isn't really as hard as you thought it might be. And I've tried to do it every year. Um, and this year's no different. April, 30,000 words, which is quite short for a book, but some older novels are around that length. Um, and I decided that I'm going to try to do that again this year. And then it came out to five minutes to midnight last night, and I realised that April is about to start, and I have no idea what I'm going to write. So I just picked the first idea that came to mind out of a big document with my list of ideas in. Um, and that was a piece called Silent Scream. Um, it's kind of spin-off of a story I've already written about a group of vampire hunters with some degree of supernatural powers. This is a spin-off story. It doesn't have any of the characters from the original in it. It just happens to be set in the same world. So they're hunting these vampires who prefer to be called shadow drinkers to distinguish them from the um, stories everybody's familiar with in the movies. They're not quite the same. They don't need to drink blood in order to feed off people. They can consume your emotions. Um, but a lot of the vampire myths are based on them, so that's basically where vampires come from in this world. Um, but I started at midnight just writing with very little idea of what I was doing or where I was going to go with it, which um, I got a couple of paragraphs done. Um, I'm quite impressed with the writing, actually. Um, so I, I didn't know where I was starting or anything. I just had this character who's the main character. She's not human, but she wants to be. So she's determined not to use her supernatural abilities and to act exactly as a human. She's already been cast out by her own kind. And, um, well, um, I don't want to talk about the plot of the book and things that are still vague ideas in my head, but... This is what I wrote last night um, in a couple of sporadic bursts of writing between midnight and 1am. Um, I might be able to put some of the text up on screen here, depending if the video editing software on my laptop is currently working. Um, if not, you'll just see me waving and talking about that and there won't be any text there. Um, but anyway, this, this is what I've got to start with. I'm trying to make a good first line. Um, so you start at the beginning. Sometimes I write out of order, but this time I decide to start with something that's maybe a prologue, maybe a first chapter. The scream rang out over the city and nobody heard. I think that's a good opening line because f straight away the reader wants to know who's screaming and why nobody's heard it. Um, then I'm going on to explain that this scream is some kind of strange supernatural scream that only supernatural creatures can hear. It's like uh, imaginary sound. Um, and all the creatures of this one particular race have this scream where they howl in the middle of the night and it carries for hundreds of miles. And all the other members of their race know what they're doing and they pass the message on from one to another so news travels around the world in a night. Um, 
humans can only hear it in very special circumstances if they're psychic or something like that or if they're gifted which is a important thing in this universe i'll talk about that when i get to writing about gifted people um because I could ramble on for ages about different elements that are going to go into this story and the things that I've already decided about this world. But I think in each episode of this little video series, I'll talk about what I've written today. But So, um, yeah, gifted people can hear the scream and the screamers can obviously hear the scream. But the prologue doesn't go into that. It starts talking about people who might be able to hear it if they knew it was there such as the gifted, who are mentioned but not described, the shadow drinkers, the tinkerers, the weavers, who manipulate fate. That's just a one-line throwaway. I've not written anything more about them. Basically, the idea that all these races exist and humanity doesn't know about them because they're down to single figures. There's like one or two of them per million humans. There's so few of them that they could be taken out by a mob or something. So the, re the way these unnatural races live on is by keeping their existence secret. One way they've done this in particular, the Shadow Drinkers have written an awful lot of stories about vampires and made, you know, they've lived for a long time. They've had time to invest Long-term investments really work when you're immortal. And they put that money into making movies. They have some influence and they ensure that there are a lot of vampire movies. Which means that anybody who sees one of them, nobody will take it seriously because they're something out of a movie. Um, and they do their best to make sure that published books, released films have an entirely inaccurate view of how their powers work and what their weaknesses are, and that helps them to survive. Because they're clearly vampires if you run into one, but all the things that the films tell you work against vampires, like holy symbols or holy water, um, most of those things will not work. So that's basically... Um, their way of defending themselves. The other races do pretty similar things. They try to make sure that if humanity knows about them, they don't know the real story. But this first chapter, I basically just got a quick list of some of the other races and some of the simplest details about the world, that unnaturals exist, that they're in decline because there's too many humans for them to deal with, and that they remain hidden. That's the basic setup. The next bit, I'll probably move to the gifted and describe some of them, or I might move on to the shadow drinkers. There is going to be a, probably there's going to be a couple of drinkers as the villains of this piece. They hide in the shadows and they kill people basically um, by consuming their souls. Um, but that's what I've got so far. Um, wait, I think I might have actually changed my idea about that Well, Yes, um, yeah, I've kind of got, got distracted and gone on off on a different tangent here. On a rooftop in the Clark Quarter, Yuki lay back in the powdery snow and looked towards the sky. Lights from the city streets made it hard to see stars, even when there was a break in the cloud cover, but she still needed to see the familiar constellations. That was one thing she missed most about living here. On Carl's farm, she'd been able to make out every star in the sky. Carl had made a point of teaching her their names, and she'd put on a good show of not knowing them already. So that's giving you a bit of character about our main character her personality, the kind of person she is, and her history. It's not telling us what she is yet. I'm actually not planning to mention that until really late on. But she's been cast out by her own people. She's trying to pretend to be human. So she's going to be um, coming up against the Shadow Drinkers, trying to save people without using her powers. 
So for the most of the story, it's not going to be relevant what she actually is, which is a contrast to the first book I wrote in this world, um, Hunter's Gift, where the main character is an orphan. She thinks she's human until she finds that... She's the half-powered old one that she hasn't realised. tangent there but basically Hunter's Gift is about this girl who isn't human but she thinks she is and then she spends the whole trilogy trying to find out what she actually is um, while her friends the Hunters are thinking she's not human does that mean she's our enemy and she's got to persuade people to trust her when she doesn't really know where she's come from. This book is coming from a very different perspective. It's about this girl, Yuki. I've not given her a surname yet. Might be Yuki Quinn. Um, but her thing is basically, she knows where she's come from. She grew up with her own kind, but she couldn't stay with them because they treat humans as a lesser form of life. They stay away from humans, but they see themselves as above us. And she ended up caring for the humans too much and got cast out by her own people. Um, I might change that later. I might change it as I write it or come up with a new plan before then. But that's basically where I'm starting off from. The last bit I've written so far is she could still watch the stars, but she didn't want to. On a night like tonight, she only felt alone. So that's giving more into the personality thing. It's like on Carl's farm, she could watch the stars and she liked doing that with him. Here, she can watch the stars despite light pollution, despite the clouds. Her vision's good enough that she could watch the stars, but she doesn't want to. Partly because it reminds her of somebody she used to know. Reasons why that hurts her isn't explained yet. Um, and I've not actually decided because this Carl was just somebody I made up while I was writing it. I don't know where that's going or how it moves into the greater plot. Yeah, I tend to um, change things a lot as I'm writing them. Um, but... The other thing with that is it's going to be a way for me to explain that she has these superhuman abilities, but she doesn't want to use them. In any case, um, yes, that's what I've written so far. I've only written like less than a page so far. I am going to do more later today because I'm aiming to do at least a thousand words every day. Um, but I'll just talk about what I've written most recently. And so you can see some of the thought process that goes into it, how I'm deciding what to write. Um, and, well, that's what I've got so far. Um, in the comments, I'll probably post a link to um, the story on Google Docs so that you can see what I've actually got um, if you want to read it all. Uh, it will grow and change because I am going to go back and edit bits as I learn more about these characters. I've not got much of a plan so far. I will probably have a plan forming in my head sometime over the next five or six days. And then I'll know vaguely where the story is going. For now, I've got the vague idea of this Yuki hunting monsters and trying to deny that she is one and I've got a vague idea of some of the people she's going to run into but I don't actually know that much about the monsters I don't know that much about the major events in the plot I haven't done the mapping the hero's journey thing so I'm going to do a short video every day talking about what I've written that day um, 
how I decided to do things a particular way. And maybe someone will find it useful, find it gives you inspiration for your own writing or shows you an alternate way of working out how to do things. But um, if you want to see that, then please um, like, comment, share and subscribe. I think that's the usual term people put on the end of these videos. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow. I can't. I, that was supposed to be a wave and I just suddenly thought Vulcan salute. Is, is it like that or like that? I can't remember. Anyway, see you tomorrow.